You just witnessed the most important touchdown of the Junior Falcons' entire season. And you saw it. It was great. It wasn't a game-winning touchdown. In fact, it was their only touchdown. In a game, they lost. But this touchdown's important because of where it started. Come on, Falcons, let's get a touchdown here! On the sideline. You right, Bryce? That's Connor Heiser. He's the manager of Rockwood Summit's seventh grade football team. He's always ready with water or an encouraging word. Good job, Matt. There's no doubt Connor's a part of the team, but what he really wanted was to play. Good job! Something that seemed unlikely. Connor was born with a condition called 22Q11, a deletion of his 22nd chromosome. Three kids in 5,000 have what Connor had. Um, because of this deletion, Connor also has low muscle tone, um, struggles with balance, um, struggles with endurance, and, 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 it, and he has to work harder than most kids to learn. Who do we got in? But Connor's dedication okay. inspired head coach Rick Younger. Hey, go so a few nights ago when the Junior Falcons played the Junior Flyers, Coach Younger made an unannounced roster change. We are gonna sneak Connor in on the first offensive play of the game. Do you, under, do you understand? As soon as Coach Younger said that, I was like, I was so happy that I didn't finally get to be on the field. Let's go, Connor! Let's go, go, go! You better move it! Get up! Get up! He fumbled, but he recovered. Get up! And the play that started on the sideline ended in the end zone. It was really awesome to feel like one of the guys. Good job, Connor. Way to go. Good job. You know, fall is my favorite time of the year. It's mostly because of how beautiful all the leaves are on the trees, except for the one in my yard. That looks like a diseased mango. But even around the neighborhood, some leaves are greener than the grass, and some are already on the ground. So I went with the next best thing, pictures on the Internet. As I flipped through the pages of fall photos, I came across this. Shipfoliage.com. For a mere $19.99 plus $3 shipping, you can have actual leaves from New England sent to your home. And if you don't want to wait for the colors of autumn, there's rush shipping available if you contact them. I'll admit I was a little too eager. I contacted them about shipping overnight. And a week-long game of ping-pong email ensued. At the end of that week, I got my package. Shipped overnight for an additional $19.99. The suspense. Finally, my eyes can feast on the colors of the Northeast. $19.99 plus $19.99 shipping for a grand total of $39.98. This is what I got. But while I'd waited for the three-leaf bundle to arrive, something magical happened. The tree in my neighbor's yard started to turn. Now I can pluck as many leaves as I want, free of charge. Oh, and no shipping costs. Steve Harris, News 4. On the outside, the treehouse of Greater St. Louis is everything you'd expect a stable would be. But the real story... One, two, three! ...is on the inside. Oh my goodness, can you see? This is Abigail. And Bush! And this is Aaliyah. She and her twin sister, Abby, uh, were both born prematurely. Uh, so with Aaliyah, she has uh, cerebral palsy. You're running! Abigail, uh, her twin sister, she was in and out of the hospital all all summer last year. Oh my goodness! This is Holly, their therapist. Okay, tell Roma. Come here, Roma. Good job. And this is Roma and Cappy. We use the horse as our tool. Yeah. Go! All right! Tools to help Abigail and Aaliyah. <laughs> so people sitting at home, they're going, come on, horses? I mean, how much good does that really do? The horse builds strength in ways that um, exercise equipments and as a therapist in just a regular clinic setting is very difficult for us to do. You see, the horse's movement simulates the movement of a person walking. Giving the muscles that you use to walk strength. Now, if you really want to know how well this works, All right! just ask mom. Oh, yeah, I mean, she's sitting and pulling up on her own and... I mean, getting up on the couch, and it's just crazy. Tell Cappy, walk on. Walk on. Therapy for the body. Doing good. And the mind. <laughs> oh my goodness. They don't even know they're working while they're out there. They're just two kids having fun on a horse. Come here, Lexi. Four-year-old Lexi Welker loves her grandma. Grandma needs a 
ahead. Fact is, her grandma, Susan, watches both Lexi and her three-year-old great-granddaughter, Olivia, every day. We go outside and play on the swings, and we play with our toys on the back deck. Having her there is a good thing. Oh, yeah, love it. Yeah, keeps you young. And a few months ago, it's a good thing she was there. The kids were out on the swing, and I went out to get the mail. And coming back, I fell over part of a fence. When I fell, I hit my head, and I broke my kneecap. And she cut her lip. So right here is where Susan tripped and fell. She hit her head on the concrete right there, am I right? I told Lexi to come here, and she said, oh, Grandma, Grandma, you look terrible. You look, you look like a monster. Well, my head was all bloody, and I was bad looking. So then Lexi opened this gate for her, and Susan was able to crawl all the way to these steps. But Lexi wasn't done helping yet. So her grandma pulled herself to these steps, and then what did she have you do? She let me get all the stuff to her. That stuff included a mirror to see how badly her head was hurt, a towel to stop the bleeding, and the phone to call 911. And then when the ambulance passed the house the first time, well, Lexi and Olivia came out to this fence and flagged him down when he went back by. I jumped up and down. Thanks to Lexi, the story ends well. And while she was just helping her grandma, she didn't expect to get anything for it, Susan gave her this certificate, suitable for framing, and... A big Barbie Lego present. A big awesome. Barbie Lego present. Hey, life is good for Lexi Welker. Yeah. And because of her, it's good for Grandma, too. No matter the time of year, most kids love... Lemonade! See what I mean? But this particular lemonade, served in the lunchroom at Harris Elementary, is more than just powder and water. Really good. It's a sweet treat on a mission. A mission that started... One more lemonade goes in. ...in Mrs. Stahlschmidt's second grade gifted class. Today we are hosting a lemonade stand in honor of one of our students, Daniel Waters. So go ahead and pour that in. That's Daniel in the shirt that says, I survived chemo. Well, I am a cancer survivor. I had cancer when I was one on my eye. He beat it. And now he's doing his part to help other kids. We have too much lemonade here! All the money made at this lemonade stand yeah. goes to a foundation that helps fund research to find a cure for childhood cancer. Now this is an annual event in Mrs. Stahlschmidt's class. In fact, I covered it last year, but I figured there's something about kids helping kids <laughs> that most people can't get enough of. I feel happy because it's gonna help um, other kids um, that are that um, need help to fight cancer. One dollar for a glass of goodness. Would you like a sticker? And a sticker right. that reminds them of what it's all about. When you're helping other people, it makes you feel good. Steve Harris, News 4. Brittany, this is not a democracy, it's a cheerocracy. If your idea of a cheerleader comes from a movie, then you haven't seen the Lafayette, the Lafayette High School. Yeah. Court. Sparkle yes, Squad. We are L H S. It's a team of special needs and varsity cheerleaders working together. The idea comes from an organization called the Sparkle Effect. They help kids create school-based cheerleading and dance teams that bring together students with and without disabilities. Like Casey and Grace. Well, Casey, well, she's awesome, and then you know she's my best friend. Oh gee. And then she helps me a lot. I've always wanted her to be more involved <laughs> growing up and just I always wanted her to do things with us and it's a way that the school really like incorporates and gives her a chance to. But the Sparkle Squad wouldn't be here if it weren't for her. Y -E -L -L. Senior and team captain Caitlin Wiley. Go Lancers! This is what she does. Ready? But this is who she is. On weekends, you'll find Caitlin volunteering in the playroom at Children's Hospital. In fact, the idea for Sparkle Squad came from her volunteer work. I love working with kids, so I started working at more camps with kids with special needs. And from that, they told me, you know, they have their own special needs basketball teams at their school or soccer teams or swim. And I thought, no, we don't have any of that. I want to bring something that I love to them, too. Down the court! So next time you see one of those cheerleader movies, <laughs> just remember Caitlin. And the Sparkle Squad. Let's go, Lancers! Let's go! For the girls on the North Star basketball team, 
Monday night Go. means practice. And in this gym full of kids, there's one story that's both heartbreaking and uplifting. The story of 17-year-old Emily Lineman. I thought it would be fun and I tried it and it ended up being one of the sports I was better at. Emily started playing basketball at a very young age. But in 2012, she was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, a type of bone cancer that cost her her left leg. Eventually it came back in her other leg, her lungs, and then... She was getting pain in her hip. She had it for a couple weeks and was afraid to tell me. Then we went and got checked and it's in her hip and this one's inoperable. And there's not much they can do about it. So we're praying for a miracle. It's why she needed to play basketball again. I can't even do a layup, so that was really good. And why she inspires her teammates. When they want to quit or they don't want to do things, they try a little bit harder just because she's there. Now, Emily really enjoyed practicing with the girls, but she never expected to play in a game. But the coaches said, if you practice with the team, you play with the team. And so Wednesday night at Valley Park, Emily played her very first game as a North Star. I know that like the other team will notice that I'm not like every other girl. They may have noticed, but you couldn't tell. Come on, Emily. At halftime, Emily was given t-shirts and balls signed by college teams from around the country. Face up. And she scored. There it is. Yeah. Twice. Rebound. Any basket made or missed after that didn't matter much. Ah. Who won the game? Well, that will eventually be forgotten. But Emily's four points won't be. Steve Harris, News 4. In a little dance studio in Belleville, Push the floor away. are eight little ballerinas. Yes. Perfecting their points and plies. Straight knees come together. Each one has a story. But this story is about her. Her name is Isabella Scheibel. Hand on your shoulder. She goes by Izzy. She's a very active nine-year-old. But her favorite thing to do... I love ballet the most. She's been doing it since the ripe old age of two. So. Like the other girls, she dresses the part. But besides the leotard and ballet shoes, Izzy wears something they don't. Next to her stomach, a continuous glucose monitor. A few months ago, Izzy was diagnosed with type 1 juvenile diabetes. I just immediately started crying. I didn't know anything. I just thought it was some kind of disease. One of the first things I asked when we got to the hospital, you know, it, does she, will she have to start taking shots? And they said, you know, they said yes. And I said, is there any way around it? Can we, can we switch something? And they said, no, she is insulin dependent and she will be for the rest of her life. I think the hardest part for us is uh, especially as being the mommy, I can't fix it. But she could fight it. On September 26th, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is having a walk in St. Charles to raise money to help find a cure. Izzy has her own team, and they'll all be wearing tutus. Elbow, wrist, fingers. Ending a story with a quote is always a nice touch. For this story, I'm gonna go with the wisdom of a nine-year-old ballerina. It's hard to live with, but you can live with it. It's the world's largest ugly Christmas sweater party, and it's happening at Ballpark Village in downtown St. Louis. If you need a little motivation, News 4 This Morning's Steve Harris has this. Twas three weeks before Christmas, and in my email, ugly Christmas sweaters was my assigned tale. Right away, St. Nicholas jumped in my head. Not this one, but this guy, Nick Zervos, instead. A co-worker known for his odd-looking sweaters. When it comes to bad taste, no one is better. So I went to his house with Nog and a log. Oh, you brought a Yule log. Not a log. I don't have a log, but you have a dog. So I sat for an hour while he modeled his wares. The sweaters were bad. They were ugly and heinous, like clothing you'd find on Mars or... Wait, I said. If I gotta wear an ugly Christmas sweater, that's the one I want. And of all the sweaters that Nicholas owned, this was his favorite, so I took it home. But it actually smelled of beef and of cheese. So I gave it a wash and a dry, if you please. You killed it. Everything I touch gets ruined. So away to my closet, I flew very quickly, but all that I found was a rod full of dickies. Dickies. And that's when I woke up. No. It was all a bad dream. Nick will harbor no grudge. But a glance in the mirror, and I said, Oh, what he said. 
Have a holly jolly Christmas. Steve Harris, News 4.